Okay, well, some of you probably looking at me thinking, fuck me, who ordered Frankie Boyle off Wish? Uh, <laughs> no, my name is Tony, uh, and it's nice to be here. <laughs> I've, uh, I've had a very weird day, if I'm honest, today. I woke up this morning with a dead leg. No idea who that belongs to. <laughs> and I got my car waxed today. Got my car waxed, yeah. No idea how it gets that hairy. So, uh... <laughs> so here we are in Dar Dartmouth. Dartmouth's a lovely place, isn't it? We've got, we got the Navy lads in. Give us a cheer if you were in the Navy. Navy. That's good. My granddad was in the Navy. My granddad was a very unlucky sailor in the Navy. He was on a ship that sunk on the 5th of November. Right? Yeah. Sunk on bonfire night, right? It's a nightmare because he did exactly what he was trained to do. He let off all the distress flares because all the people on the other ships just went, ooh. <laughs> ah. So he drowned. So, uh... so there it goes. Here we are. <laughs> So, so fucking hell, by the way, you guys over there, fucking all the lads that came in, you got so excited at the word snatch, isn't it? Is because the closest you've ever got to one, by the looks of it. The one in the glasses over there, fucking hell, Harry Potter over there. <laughs> how, how old are you guys? Are you guys like 18, 19? Is that what you're 24, 24, and you're hanging out with these like you fucking pedo. <laughs> so, anyway, what do I need to say about myself? Uh, I'm in a relationship, believe it or not. Give us cheer for me being in a relationship. Oh. Yeah, so sorry, 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 ladies, and sorry, gents over there. This fine piece of lamb beef. It's off the market. I know you're devastated over there. Some of you fancy a bit of a, a sugar daddy bear. I know some of you are. But no, no. I've got a new girlfriend, hey, Joe, and uh, I, met her, I met her while she was working at the zoo. Yeah, there she was, in a uniform. Straight away, I thought, she's a keeper. <laughs> That's why we're going to get some proper fucking jokes. <laughs> But like, uh, who's single? Who's single? Give us cheer for single. <laughs> I don't know why my focus was over there. <laughs> no, 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 lads, lads, there's hope for you. I don't know if any of you have been single for a while. I was single for five years, right? Five years. I know, I got so lonely, so lonely, so desperate. In the end, I made myself a Lego sex doll. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, I loved her to bits. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she had a fantastic arse, but in the end I did have to break it off. So, uh... <laughs> so no, I've got a new girlfriend. My new, my new, we've got people from all over the place, haven't we? Who, who's actually from Dartmouth? Give us cheer if you're actually from Dartmouth. Give us cheer if you live in Dartmouth, but you're not from Dartmouth. Right. So my, new more. my new girlfriend, my new girlfriend is a Geordie. I don't suppose you I don't suppose we've got, have we got any Geordies in? Why I? Why I? <laughs> no, that I love the way you were fucking surprised that I could hear that, didn't you? Bless her. What, what's, what's your name, the lovely lady that was filming earlier? Um, I'm at a school here. It's only because my, um, my head office is in Newcastle, but I didn't need to shout. Your head office is in Newcastle? Oh, who do you work for? Is it Kieran? Is it? No, it's called Sorry, I, I was just asking if your name was Kieran, not the company name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you work, so you work, went up to Newcastle. Do you like Newcastle? I love it. It's brilliant, isn't it? it's a fantastic place. My new girlfriend's uh, a Geordie. And we're not only romantically involved, we've gone into business together, yeah? We've opened an animal crematorium <laughs> up in Newcastle. Yeah, called Alfida Zayn Pet. <laughs> but the way, I, the way I got my, my Geordie girlfriend right was I amazed her with a fact about Newcastle. I learned a fact about Newcastle because I'm a soft. <laughs> I'm a soft southerner. Are we all southerners mostly here? Give us cheer for a southerner. Yeah. Northerners, give us cheer. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, Midlanders. Yeah. So, so no, I was worried about being a soft southerner, right, up in Newcastle. So I learnt a fact about Newcastle to amaze the Georgians, right, so I could ingratiate myself with them. And this is the fact I learnt. I learnt that the medical condition, gangrene, well, you may have all heard of gangrene. That was first discovered in Newcastle by a Geordie doctor. Yeah, he was looking at a bloke's leg, 
He went, I don't know what it is, but it's going green. <laughs> <laughs> <Hey. laughs> true story. So, uh, so no, I'll tell you where I'm originally from. I'm originally from East Anglia. I'm a Suffolk boy. I was born in Ipswich. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Someone's very excited about Suffolk. Have we got someone else from Suffolk in? Mark Marlsham. Marlsham? Oh, fucking hell. Marlsham and Heath there. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, you're a proper sort of bandit country there, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> give me six there, fella. That was weird. <laughs> Oh, what, what, what's your name? Uh, Greer. Greer? Suffolk, where we have two yachts in 11 toes. <laughs> two, two yachts in 11 toes. You're from Posh Suffolk. <laughs> That's it. Now, I, I grew up, I'm from, I'm from Scumsville, Suffolk. I, I was poor. I was poor growing up. Uh, and uh, this will shock you, lovely people, it might not shock you, but I didn't lose my virginity till I was 21 years old. Oh. Oh. Shocking. I know, and it's good to see you again, sir. <laughs> it's ironic like, that you're doing the fisting motion. <laughs> no, no, genuinely, though, no, genuinely. Like, the lads over there will be shocked, right? I didn't lose my jersey until I was 21 years old. But, that, but that's what happens in East Anglia when you are an only child. <laughs> Fucking hell, I'm glad you've laughed at that because it's a brave comedian that does an incest joke in Devon, isn't it? So, so I noticed some of you clapping a little bit louder when you've got that. So, <laughs> so no, uh, no, it is nice to, nice to be It's nice to be doing stand up comedy as well because we've, we've got the Navy people in. Give us a cheer, people who aren't in the Navy. Fucking hell, you are very happy not to be in the Navy. What's yeah, your name, sir? Fuck the Navy, I'm full on, man. What's your name, sir? Piers. Sorry? Piers. Piers? Yeah. Piers. 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 What do you do for a living, Piers? I work in construction. You work in construction, kind of your builder? Yeah, Specialise in erections? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great, because because I I've done various different jobs, right? But during the during uh, the pandemic, of course, we couldn't do live stand-up comedy. We couldn't have gatherings like this time. It's lovely to be back doing this on this uh, this stage. Uh, is it a couple of pallets? I'm not sure. But like, but no, I had no job for 18 months, right? I couldn't do this. Couldn't do stand-up, and I had to go back to my first ever job, right? The only job I've ever been trained to do. I went back to being a locksmith later. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was a very good locksmith. I uh, studied at Yale. <laughs> and I have to say that opened a lot of doors for me. <laughs> and of course it was great because during the pandemic I was considered a key worker. So <laughs> <laughs> but no, I did have to do various different jobs, right? And uh, there's a lot of lovely ladies in tonight. The mums at the back there might appreciate this. My favourite job during the pandemic was working at the Rampant Rabbit Factory. <laughs> <laughs> Padre's wife is looking away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what he's I don't think she is. <laughs> no, are you all aware of the Rampant Rabbit? Yeah, I worked at the Rampant Rabbit factory. That was a brilliant job. It was fantastic. We had a brilliant motivational slogan. It was, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> So what else, what else do I need to tell you about this? This might not go down well with so many Navy people here because on my mum's side, my granddad was in the Navy on my mum's side, but on my dad's side, we were, they were all in the army. So I come from a military family. I know, pongos, pongos, a lot of them, right? And uh, my granddad, uh, my dad, my dad was in the army, we moved around a lot. My dad was a royal engineer, right? Specialised in clearing minefields. Yeah. And he always wanted me to follow in his footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> and my granddad, my granddad was in the army as well. My granddad was the regimental Christmas tree. Yeah. Didn't see any action, but he was highly decorated. <laughs> and even even my nan, even my nan was in the military as well. My nan was a military midwife. Yeah, she was in the C-section. <laughs> Sorry, groaning about that, but it's not easy to tell jokes about midwifery, is it? Because uh, it's all in the delivery. So. <laughs> so 
So you guys are, you guys are based at Dartmouth at the college there, are you? Right. Do, you, do you, guys, have you guys ever heard of a thing called docking? Do you, do you know about dockings? <laughs> Sometimes called space yeah, docking. Yeah. Are you lads aware of this? Part of it, have you ever heard about this? Right, because I was doing a gig, right? Maybe this is, maybe this is more of an army thing, right? I'll, 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 I'll diverge this with the uh, civilians, right? Because I was doing a gig up in Catterick, right? up in the barracks at Catterick, and I learned a thing about a uh, called docking, right? Which apparently is uh, a survival technique that male soldiers do when they're out in the field. <laughs> Maybe you guys can try, and try this when you're bunking on the ship or something, I don't know. But like, to conserve body heat, what happens is two male soldiers go <laughs> into one sleeping bag, like, snuggle up together, and one man, one man rolls back the foreskin of his penis, whilst the other man rolls the foreskin of his penis over the first man. <laughs> So they link together. <laughs> Apparently, standard British Army procedure. Or so I was told by the bloke I was bunking with in Captain Carson. <laughs> and if I'm honest, I don't think they do it in the Israeli Defence Force. <laughs> Look, we can see the guys pairing up now, so he's going to try it later on. There's a real night story, in, guys, you can try it later on. So, you know, I, did, uh, I tried, to use, uh, tried to use lockdown, effectively, later on. I, uh, I wrote a film script during lockdown. Yeah, I wrote a film script, I've sent this to Hollywood. Uh, it's about a constipated detective. It's about a constipated detective, it's called No Shit Sherlock. <laughs> Because I went, when I was a lad's age over here, when I was like, uh, I was just in my early 20s, I actually went to Hollywood, ladies and I went to seek my fame and fortune when I was a young man, right? And I was in my 20s, and like a lot of young people, I went out to LA to try and make my fame and fortune. It didn't, didn't go well, I didn't make my fame and fortune, I ended up destitute, ladies and ended up penniless on the streets of LA, right? And the only way I could make any money was to like do things that I wouldn't normally do. And I'll share this with you lovely people because it was one of the darkest moments of my life. And when I found myself spanking, spanking Dwayne Johnson, that was when I really knew I'd hit rock bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't remember. Really make... <laughs> Don't worry, I'll, I'll come round. I'll come round with a cheat sheet later, and it's later. Fantastic. I want to watch your name, lovely lady. Lynn. Lynn. Fantastic. Lynn. Lynn. Do you live in Dartmouth, Lynn? No, I live in Denham. In Denham? Yeah. Denham. Is that is that very far away? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> How far away is far away, Lynn? Buckinghamshire. Oh, it's Buckinghamshire. Oh, you just down for a holiday? Yes. Oh, fantastic. And what do you do for a living, Lynn, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I'm a retired nurse. You're a retired nurse, oh, fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I might talk to you about some health things in a minute, Lynn. Here's, here's the thing, Lynn. Did you work for the NHS, Lynn? Yeah? I love the NHS. Aren't the NHS brilliant? Yeah. Oh, yeah. One thing about the NHS I don't understand, though, is what have they got yeah. against cervixes? Yeah, why the smear campaign? <laughs> actually, Lynn, Lynn, I'll talk to you about this, actually. So, have we got any other men? Because I, I, I turned 50 at the end of May. Have we got any other men who are 50 and older? Yay! <laughs> that is the cry of a 50 year old man. What, what is your name, sir? Uh, Ginger. Ginger, look at you, you look good on 50 though, Ginger. <laughs> Ginger, can I ask you one question? Have you had the male health MOT? No. Have awesome. you not had it yet? No. I don't know. Do you, maybe this is a Navy thing. Do you, do you guys have to have a full health check when you join the Navy? Because yeah. when I talk to people about the male health MOT, Ginger, right, they normally know that about one, one thing that they, sorry, I probably shouldn't do that for the one thing they check. <laughs> Because they do all sorts of things. Lynn will know about this as an NHS worker. They check all sorts of things. <laughs> I 
I can't tell whether Lynn's wearing gloves or she's just got brown fingers on <laughs> Oh, that was too far, wasn't it? Sorry. Man. Man, they, che they check the prostate, right? The Padre, uh, I don't know, have you, have you had a full health check like that? Have you? Of course, yeah. You know, you check everything? Sort of, sort of. That was a mysterious answer. That sounds like you haven't had an official uh, prostate check. But, but I'm sure down at the docks you can get one on a Friday night. <laughs> There's a guy called Alan in the toilet, he'll just check it for you. Doesn't even charge anything. He just comes the table. No, I had to get my prostate checked. I had to get my prostate checked, right? And the young lads over there, you know how they check the prostate, yeah? No, they don't know. They don't know. Don't know. Basically, finger up the bottom to check the prostate. That is how it's checked. Look, some of you looking fucking shocked now. Some of you, some of you thinking, fucking hell, I've done that myself on a few days. <laughs> but no, I think, if I'm honest, I think my doctor got me under false pretenses. Because uh, they told me they were going to check my prostate, but they said they were going to check it via digital examination. And I thought, brilliant, it's all online nowadays. That's the best one to do. But no, it was traditional method, finger up the bottom. Although I said this at a gig the other day, right, and this woman was irate. She said to me, no, 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 that is not how they check the prostate nowadays. Nowadays they can do it over the phone. <laughs> and that just blew my mind, because I've got an old iPhone 6, right? This thing is huge. <laughs> I don't know how that's going up there, if I'm honest. And uh, to be honest, the camera's not that good, and the torch doesn't work anymore, so... Uh, <laughs> Now I had, to, I had to do traditional method, I went to a proctologist, uh, and if I'm, in, if I'm honest, he was an incredibly lazy man, and in the end I did have to tell him to pull his finger out. <laughs> but he was a lovely man, he told me he doesn't actually want to be a proctologist, he wants to be an orthopaedic surgeon. And I just thought, well, I hope he knows his ass from his elbow. <laughs> So I do a lot of travelling doing this. I've never been to Dartmouth before. This is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Fantastic place. <laughs> Look at you clapping, you're like taking credit. Yes, it is. Yes, it's very good. Yes, yes. That's, all down, that's all down to me, though. <laughs> no, it is a lovely place, really. Because you do all sorts of travelling doing this job, right? And I travel all over the world. I was, I was down in Australia not so long ago. Give us a cheer if you've been to Australia. <laughs> down there and while I, was, uh, while I was in Sydney, while I was in Sydney, a friend of mine told me he was going out with a girl from one of the suburbs of Sydney. I said, manly? He said, well, she has got big feet. <laughs> and a cock. So, um... <laughs> but I do love the travel aspect of this uh, job. I'm not a fan, no, if I'm honest, not a fan of Germany. I'm afraid they do. Not a fan of Germany. No, I hope it's not controversial. But I'm not a fan of Germany, not for any political or historic reasons or even sporting reasons. It's just that, just that I had a bad experience as a child in Germany on a family holiday when my dad nearly choked to death on a German sausage. <laughs> Some of the ladies and a man over there had a similar experience. <laughs> no, my dad nearly choked to death on a German sausage. And of course, after that, we feared the worst. <laughs> <laughs> This lady, a meat-based pun, she was just like, no, I'm off, I'm out. <laughs> no, I do love the travel aspect. I was, uh, I've been down here, uh, I was down uh, in Devon today, and I, was, uh, I, I went into one of the Waterstones bookshops today, that was quite, quite good. I was uh, in there, cause I, and I went into the travel section, because I do love reading about travel as well. And I saw a book, there's a brand new book out today, right? And it's called 101 Places to Visit Before You Die. I thought, oh, that's interesting. I picked it up, flicked through it. Didn't suggest a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> number one answer, ladies and gentlemen. Number one answer. Number one answer was the Taj Mahal. <laughs> which, if I'm honest, is not even the best Indian restaurant in Dublin. <laughs> 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 oh, oh we've got Taj Mahal fans. <laughs> Brilliant, no, so, uh, so I am originally from Suffolk, like, I, I was born in Ipswich for the, the lad from Marsham there, and uh, I'm a village idiot, it's not hard to confuse me, it's not hard to confuse me, I got confused the other day, some of you may have heard people say this, someone told me that 40 is the new 30, you heard people say 40 is the new 30? Yeah, yeah. but you try explaining that to a speed camera. <laughs> or a Welshman. Or a Welshman. I'm not entirely sure that makes sense, but let's go with it. 
Are you worse than so or have you had experience here also? Speed limit's now 20, isn't it? Sorry? Speed limit's now 20. Oh, they've gone down to 20 over there, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be interesting, isn't it? Like, that's because they're riding sheep. It's going to be easier to catch a sheep, though. <laughs> <laughs> Have we got any Welsh in, by the way? Give us a cheer if you're Welsh. Have we got one Welsh in? Oh, no, Have we got any Scots in, by the way? Give us a cheer if you're Scottish. Oh, I'm half Scottish. Yep. No Scots in, although it's still probably enough for a fight there. <laughs> but no, here's the thing I realised as well. I realised this today, right? Take this away, yeah? I realised this today, right? If you rearrange, if you rearrange the letters of postman, yes. They get really annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> and I bumped into my neighbour today, right? My neighbour told me some sad news. He told me that his wife had been killed by Spanish terrorists. <laughs> yeah, I said, Etta. He said, no, they blew her up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to get healthy at the moment. I'm guessing the lads in the Navy do PT and stuff. Padre, do you do the PT and the physical training? Fizz. Look, look, yes. look at you, fine figure of a man. That's good. Fizz. No, sorry? Fizz. Fizz, is that what you call it? Fizz. Fizz. Not PT, is that more of an army Fizz. thing, is it? Sorry, I offended you there. But Fizz. <laughs> Because I've, I've started, I, I think that I need to do fizz because obviously I'm a man, I'm, I'm, I'm having a midlife crisis, I turned 50, I'm overweight, and I've signed up for the gym, and uh, I've only been once, it was a disaster, went down to the gym, jumped on the cross trainer, although to be fair, he wasn't cross before I jumped on him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, one, one, one lady clapping there, that was good. You, you were hoping to lead a round of applause there, but it turned, oh, like it turned into an applaud, didn't it? That was amazing. But, uh, just from me, just either from you're, me. Thank you, madam. Either you're clapping there or you're just putting some ketchup on your chips. Sure, but, uh, but no, I, uh, I did and I did a bit of research as well going to the gym. I found out the word gymnasium, because you seem like quite a learned crowd, you might know this, but the word gymnasium in ancient Greek actually meant naked exercise. <laughs> But you try telling that to the receptionist at Fitness First. <laughs> <laughs> and the police when they turn up. <laughs> yeah, apparently now I'm on some sort of register. <laughs> Goes with the beard, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, I was quite proud of myself. I was quite proud of myself. I was asked this year if I'd run the London Marathon for charity. I was asked if I'd run the charity. And I thought about it later, I did thought, I thought long and hard, but in the end, in the end I said no. Mainly because I've no experience of organising an event that big. I know it's for charity, but 40,000 people into that thing. I don't think I'd handle the admin, I'm not even. But like, has anyone here run a marathon, my lady? Is she run a marathon? Yeah. Oh, have you run a marathon, Alan? Hey, so what's your name? Emma, fantastic. And uh, which marathon did you run? You did the London one. And did you do it in fancy dress? Did you do it in fancy dress or just in your uh, running gear? Always fancy dress. What was your fancy dress? No, you just you dressed as no fat. <laughs> I hope you didn't go for them. Anyway, we won't go there. And what was your time, Emma? What was your time? Just like four, oh, give her a big round of applause. Woo! Four hours, that is brilliant. Woo! And what charity were you running for? The British Legion, Royal British Legion, fantastic. Very well. Woo! I do, it's one of my ambitions. I've got two ambitions in life, if I'm honest. Uh, one is to open the world's greatest pub for short people. Yeah, well, I do, well, I, do, I do worry that I may have set the bar too high. <laughs> <laughs> but my second ambition is to run the marathon, the London Marathon. I want to do it in fancy dress. See what you think, Emma, right? I've had this genius idea. I want to run the London Marathon dressed as a jacket potato. Yes! Right, yeah, I'm going to get a baked potato. There's another jacket potato. <laughs> I'm going to get a baked potato costume, right? Dress up as a jacket spud with little legs sticking out the bottom. I'm going to run all 26 and a bit miles. Because when I cross the finish line and they wrap me in tin foil, <laughs> it's complete <silver. laughs> So yeah, so I, I like to say I'm an idiot, but I am quite creative. I think that's why I got in stand-up comedy. Quite creative, and uh, I love that program Dragon's Den as well. Have you ever seen that Dragon's yeah. Den? Inventors go on pitch their ideas, and I've invented a product, right? Like, so I think it's going to make millions. 
This is where I really think I'm going to make my money, right? See what you think, ladies and gentlemen. I have invented a medicated shampoo, right? Not only clears up your dandruff, but also helps alleviate arthritis in athletes' foot. And we're going to market this as head and shoulders, knees and toes. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So I figure, mum. So I figure if the adult version works, then we can bring out the junior no more tears version. It'll be head and shoulders, knees and toes, eyes and knees and mouth and nose. So I do, I do go for one of these brains if I'm honest. I'm very creative, but I do have a brain that I can't switch off sometimes. I don't know if like, like Emma, you hear it like that? Do you get to sleep all right? Or do you, do you, when you hear... Headspace, are you using the apps and things? I need to do that. Because when my head hits a pillow, that is when my brain suddenly kicks into gear, right? My brain starts going crazy, like with thoughts going through my head. Quite often, Emma, it's, it's questions. Questions keep me awake at night. Philosophical questions. Like, can you get acupuncture to cure <laughs> pins and needles? <laughs> Is Cajun chicken the opposite of free range chicken? <laughs> Do vibrators come with a list of dildos and dildos? <laughs> <laughs> What's called the underneath of an elephant? That was keeping me awake the other night, right? Emma, what would you call the underneath of an elephant? It's a mad thing to be awake trying to think of, isn't it? But what would you call it? You call it the belly, yeah, but I've asked other people and they've said it's the chest, it's the torso, flanks. I've had all sorts of different answers. Because that's the problem, isn't it? There is no agreed term for the underneath an elephant. No, it's a huge grey area. Hey. Oh, hey. Hey. <laughs> so I, do, I love my animals, I love my animals. Uh, I, I love, uh, my dog is my favourite animal, if I'm honest with uh, pet. Give us a cheer if you've got a dog. Dog people, I love my dog. I love my dog. I, I, I got, I got a rescue. I did a good thing. I got a rescue dog. Yeah. Got a rescue dog. Yeah. Baggy, which is lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, except, of course, when he gets called out in the middle of the night. Okay, that was just for three people there. Did everyone get the guys over there? Did you get the life, the lifeboat boys got it. Yeah, they got it. That's the good. Okay. <laughs> are, you, are you lads with a lady? Are you aware of a rescue dog? I didn't even, fucking hell, I didn't realise this was going to turn into a workshop. Because <laughs> a dog from a dog's home, yeah? Would be called a rescue dog, yeah? <laughs> but I thought, wouldn't it be funny if I meant it was a rescue dog that went out on rescues? We got it. To we rescue got people. It. Look at them, looking at me going, no, we got it, Dicko, we just didn't find it funny. <laughs> Uh, my next door neighbours, they've just got a new dog as well, they just found out that she's in heat, which was a surprise to them because they didn't even realise she was a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, I'm going to leave you lovely people in a moment. I'm going to leave you... Is that Kate? Is it, is it Kate? I'm enjoying it. Oh, Vanessa, Vanessa. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Vanessa. I, was like, I, like the way, I like the way you said, no, 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 you're not going anywhere. No, you're not going in, anywhere. In a, in a lovely but slightly intimidating way as well. Like, <laughs> so like, Vanessa, Vanessa, just when you shout that out, this, this went from like a comedy gig to almost a hostage situation. <laughs> it's like, no, you're not getting out of here. But, but no, I'm, I'm going to go in a minute later. Have you had a good night, by the way? I believe they, they run this rich, do you run this every month, is it? No, I don't know. No, they don't know when it is. About four years, is it? Three, three or four, yeah, every quarter. Every quarter, every quarter, good stuff. Are you all going to come again? Yeah! yeah so even, even the lady from Bucket Machine, you're going to come all the way down. <laughs> yeah, come again, that's brilliant. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'm going to leave you on a couple of last things. I'll, I'll tell you a quick, because you haven't been, you've been lovely actually, you haven't been particularly heckling, which is great. And there's a bit of a myth in stand-up comedy that heckling is a thing, right? It's not a thing, and I would not encourage it, right? But I'm going to tell you very quickly the best heckle I've ever had, right? If you're ever going to heckle, this is Premier League heckling, right? I was doing a rugby club up in Manchester. Uh, 200 people in a rugby club. Have you got anyone from Manchester in? I won't hold this against you, lovely man, here in person. But like, I was doing a rugby club, Manchester, 200 people, Saturday night, and I'm not going to lie to you, lovely people, I died one of the worst deaths I've ever had, right? 
10 minutes, 10 minutes, I was dying on my hole. I was chucking out jokes, no one was laughing. I was trying to make uh, small talk with people, do a bit of banter. No one would make eye contact because it was so cringy. And I got halfway through my set and I panicked. I panicked. I just thought, shit, this is a disaster. The promoter has booked me, this is the first gig he's ever booked me, he's never going to book me again. And all these people here are going to go home and they're going to tell everyone they know that they've just seen the worst comedian in the UK and my name will be mud. I'll never be able to gig in Manchester ever again, right? So halfway through my set, I thought, shit, what can I do to, to remedy this situation? And the only thing I could think of was that I'd have to try and make a new first impression. So I said to the audience, I went, look guys, I realise you're not enjoying this. Right? I realise you're not enjoying this. I'm not enjoying this up here either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk off to the side of the stage. I'm going to re-announce myself. And when I come back on, I want you all to erase the last 10 minutes from your memory and imagine a completely different comedian that's come on stage. <laughs> right? So I walked off to the side of the stage, re-announced myself, just went, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Tony Cowards. How much do I start? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and much to my surprise, they did that. They cheered and whooped and went crazy, even though I'd stunk the place out for 10 minutes. And I thought, brilliant, they're going to give me a second chance. Fantastic. Right? So as the cheering subsided, I launched into a completely different opening joke. Got to the punchline, and once again, absolute silence. I was hoping for a big laugh. Nothing at all, right? Tumbleweed moment. And that's when I got the best heckle I've ever had. Because just from the back of the room, the Mancunian guy just shouted out, Hey, bring back the first guy! <laughs> Which is heckles going there, Joe, it's pretty devastating. So, uh, so anyway, Joe, I'm not going to leave you with this, because uh, uh, I didn't bring it with me. I think it goes in it. But no, <laughs> leave you on. Oh, by the way, my name's Tony Cowards, ladies and gentlemen. Tony Cowards. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, you know the young lads and all the people here. Uh, if you uh, if you want to follow me, uh, I'm staying in a hotel just around the corner. So, uh, I'm just going to walk around the block, basically. <laughs> Uh, so you're quite welcome to follow me. Um, it's good. Uh, no, if you do social media and stuff, follow me. That'd be great. Um, and I'll leave you on one last thing, right? Because I, as I've got uh, older, I've got into slightly alternative therapies, right? Dart Dartmouth, gives, I get a bit of an impression it's a bit like, are you a bit hippy-dippy around here? They've got like loads of acupuncture and, and mass... I don't know why I'm looking at you, Emma. Do you, do you know the scene? It looks like the sort of place where you can get your tra chakras realigned and get a dream capture and stuff. Anyway. So I've got into all that sort of spiritual thing, right? And I've got into various alternative therapies. And I know I was coming down to entertain you lovely people uh, down here. By the way, Noel said it's true. I had a five hour journey getting down here, if I'm honest, because I've traveled down from the East Midlands. I live in Loughborough now. And uh, I went across on the M42. Came down, obviously, the M5. And if I'm honest, I had a bit of a disaster because my car broke down on the M5. Uh, thank you. And I had to call out. I can't, it's like, no, thank you. It was, it was good though, because I'm a member of the RAC. So I called out the REC and the recovery man who turned up, he was a lovely man, he said to me, Tony, if I can't get your car going, I'll pull you off at the next junction. <laughs> I know. I just thought, lads, I just thought, bloody hell, that is comprehensive roadside assistance. <laughs> uh, although, although, sad end to that story, he did get my car going. So. Uh, uh, I know. Get off my son! I know. I know, Piers. Can't even get a wank off a mechanic. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> honest, I don't think I can afford the labour. Uh, but, um, <laughs> but no, anyway, what I, was, I, was, I, had a lot, I knew I had a long journey to come here and I knew I was going to do this lovely gig here and I thought, I want to be on top of my game. I want to be full of energy. Right? And I've had a busy week. And I thought, what can I do? What, what therapy can I do to give myself an energy boost, right? And I found out about this thing. Uh, I went and had a coffee enema. What? Yeah, exactly. You, you know what an enema is, yeah? You're all aware of an enema? Like, basically, a coffee enema. The mum's over here, you'll know about it, yeah? Coffee, coffee enema. Basically the same, but you get a cup of coffee, a funnel, and some tubing, right? And sorry, Padre's wife, there's no, no, no nice way of saying it. <laughs> 
<laughs> what would you call that area, by the way? What would you call that? Yeah. that? <laughs> You're awesome! Colostomy! Colostomy! Let's just call it... Let's, colostomy! Colostomy, let's just call it nature's wookie hole or something. <laughs> anyway, the, anyway the, the, the tube goes up there. The tube goes up your bum hole, right? And, uh, and you pour the coffee down the funnel. Right, lads, you can do this. If you ever like, when you you know you, you do like watch where you have to stay really focused, do you? This would be brilliant for you guys, right? Get a coffee out of it, right? Pour, pour the coffee from the mug down the funnel, up the tube, it goes up your bum hole, right? And in your lower digestive system, in your colon, right, there's loads of blood vessels. And what happens is the active ingredient in the coffee, the caffeine, right, the stimulant, goes straight into your bloodstream, gets pumped all around your body, right? And it gives you a massive caffeine rush. Takes about a second. Gives you a massive caffeine. It's like necking a load of Red Bull vodka, right? You're having a load of espresso. And ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you this: if you're feeling low energy, if you're feeling low energy, you've been knackered, right? It's amazing. Really, really wakes you up. Does, however, get you thrown out of Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> and don't make a mistake I made, ladies and gentlemen. Let the coffee cool down first. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you've been absolutely awesome. Keep supporting this bar. Keep supporting this comic book. And for the rest of you, we're going to have a ton of cards. We've had a gig, we've had a gig, we thought it was going to be uh, something.